Hey everyone, I just wanted to make this video just giving some advice about how to approach this text, Ulysses by James Joyce. Um, a lot of people have heard about this book, but not that many people have read it or reread it, which is what you really need to do if you want to understand the content um, and the meaning behind this, this novel. And the first thing you need to do is figure out what edition you want to buy. Um, I have a couple editions here. Both of them are by uh, Vintage Books. The ones that usually students have to read in college seminars is the Gabler edition, and that one... Um, I do recommend for first-time readers just because it has line numbers, which correspond uh, well if you're reading secondary sources. I just prefer this edition just because the Gabo edition is uh, pretty ugly. Um, this edition also just looks better, in my opinion. It also has the giant <laughs> first letter at the beginning of the chapter. So I think that this edition is more faithful to what Joyce would have wanted his readers to read. Um, the second thing I would recommend is even before you read the book, is to get a mindset that the first time you read this book, you're just not going to understand it. Um, I think that's very, very important because people always get bogged down in the details. They feel like they need to understand every single sentence, um, every single word of what Joyce says. And the fact is that's just not possible. If I just flipped any random page and you'll see and try to read um, a sentence, it's completely um, indescribable and it's not easy to understand. Um, and so a lot of people say that this means, oh, this book is unreadable, it's not a book for me. Um, I don't think that's true. I think that people just need to get into the mindset that the first read through that they're probably not gonna understand uh, basically 80% of what they read and that's okay. The whole point is just to finish the book the first time around. Um, have someone who maybe you could read with, discuss the plot with. Um, the optimal situation is if you were taking a class with a professor who studied this book for many, many years, that would be the best situation. And luckily for me, that was the situation I had to be in. But even when I took um, a college class on ULCs, that was the second time I'd read the book. And the first time I read the book was by myself just using... Um, you know, spark notes just to figure out what was going on and even then I, I didn't understand probably like 90% what was going on so I think you need to have that in mind first the next piece of advice that I would give is that you know I'm not going to tell you what happens in this book but I will say that there are um, there are 18 chapters 18 episodes each modeled after uh, an episode in Homer's The Odyssey I would say that it is helpful to read The Odyssey Homer's Odyssey but it's not uh, necessary what I do think would be helpful is if you read some sort of plot summary before um, approaching each chapter. That's way, that way you know what's going on um, before you start reading. I think that can be very clarifying. And <clears throat> what I would say is that in college, I use Spark Notes, and I know a lot of people don't like that. So if you're someone who doesn't like Spark Notes, what I'd recommend is using... So the new Bloomsday book is one of the best books, I'd say, for first-time readers to get as a, as a reference just because what they do is they do a line by line um, summation essentially of what's going on in the novel. Um, and that's really helpful because, you know, if there's a line that you just really don't understand what's going on, um, this book will help explain that. And I think definitely this over the, the, the Gilbert book, this is a must have. And that's not to say that the Gifford book is not good. I do think that most people go to this as their first uh, secondary resource. I don't think that's a bad idea. My only complaint is that for first-time readers, it's not the best in terms of its organization because there's just a lot of information that's thrown at you without uh, much explanation towards its meaning or significance. Um, so you can even just see here, so you get a map, tells you where the first episode happens, gives you a bunch of uh, context at the beginning in terms of the parallels with the Odyssey, and then it just kind of does this, where it just kind of gives you one word or a phrase, and then it just gives you what that phrase is referencing. And I think for a lot of first-time readers, <clears throat> this can be very intimidating and not really that clarifying. So that's why, in my opinion, you should avoid uh, using the Gifford until your second or third read, um, and then but just focus on using the new Boomsday book on your first read. So another piece of advice that I would give is to schedule your reading of the book. Um, this is a, just a general helpful tip for really long books that I found is if you say, I'm going to read this book for three months, I can't imagine reading a book for longer than three months, so I'm just going to set myself a deadline of three months, that that can be very helpful. And specifically, since this book has 18 chapters, you can split it up on a week-by-week -week basis. And so what I would suggest for most readers, uh, first-time readers, is to read the first nine chapters on a three chapter per week basis. 
So the first week you read the first three chapters, the next three chapters, the next three chapters, uh, once a week. And then once you get to chapter 10, then read one chapter per week. Because at that point, the chapters get very long, very complicated, and you're going to want to spend a week on each one. Um, so that will take up a few months of your time, but I think that's a pretty reasonable reading schedule for Ulysses. And once you get it done, then you'll get it done. You're ready for your second read. Um, <clears throat> one other piece of advice I want to give is that a lot of people find the first three chapters of Ulysses, um, which is also called the Telemach Telemachiad, um, to be very intimidating. And that's basically all the way up to this point where the character of Mr. Leopold Bloom is introduced. And what I would say for those people, if you can't, um, get through the first few chapters, and most of these people get stuck at the beginning of the Proteus chapter, which is the first, which is the third chapter, um, in which Stephen Dedalus, you know, he has his first stream of consciousness, epi consciousness episode, and that can be very challenging for a lot of people. And so, if that's the case with you, then I'd say just skip the first three chapters and just start um, with Mr. Leopold Bloom because that chapter is a lot more clear-cut, much more simple, and Joyce wanted it to be that way. And then once you finish maybe chapters three to six, uh, four to six, then I'd go back and back to one and then skip over to seven, and hopefully that will make the reading experience better. Um, one other piece of advice I wanted to give is the use of an audiobook. I think this is just a generally a really good a way to approach um, a lot of these kind of classics that have a lot of uh, maybe old language that we don't use anymore or language that's in a dialect that's really hard to read, um, especially if you're an American like me. So what I would say is read the book, but read it with an audiobook playing because Joyce is a very lyrical writer. And you'll notice this right away that he's very particular about the kinds of words he uses, the sounds that they produce, and specifically the way they convey the Irish accent. And so find an audiobook, and I've got an audiobook here that, that I used in college that has a very thick Irish accent that's very, very important. And you'll see why once you start reading it, you'll notice that Joyce's Ulysses is very, very Irish, and it want, he wanted it to be that way. I'll just play a sample here. While in rapt attention, his even white teeth glistening yeah, so I would get I would get an audiobook like this and read it with, and it also just helps kind of with the flow of reading and making sure that you don't stop reading. If you just let the audiobook and the audio and the sounds of the words carry you through the book, you know you're gonna finish this book at some point. Um, and this way you just kind of don't get stuck on trying to figure out what everything means. Um, I also wanted to give a shout out to this podcast, Frank Delaney's Rejoice. Unfortunately, this person um, passed away before he could finish this series, but it's a really great podcast series. And what he does is he, and I believe he goes up to chapter nine, he got to around chapter nine. Um, he just kind of, in a very, um, a very positive and encouraging way, kind of explains uh, uh, phrase by phrase. Sometimes it's literally just one word. Sometimes it's an entire paragraph. Um, through Ulysses and just kind of gives you the cultural historical background. And I find this person extremely enjoyable to listen to, and I think for beginners that this is a good way uh, to approach to approach Joyce. Okay, so I hope that video was helpful. What I'm going to be doing on this channel um, is basically creating a series of videos, um, personal essays, reflections about Ulysses, James Joyce, about my recent reading of the novel. Um, and what I'm going to do is try to organize it chronologically through the novel so that you can follow it um, while you're reading the book too. So let me know if that was helpful and if you have any other questions.